All right, in this video, we're going to talk about DNS, uh, which stands for the Domain Name Service. Now, DNS is fundamentally kind of one of the unsung heroes of the internet. Um, without DNS and its function, there would really be no internet. We wouldn't be able to do any of the wonderful stuff uh, we do today. So let's continue here. In this video, we're going to uh, go through just a couple slides about DNS. And then we're going to actually do a demo and capture some live packets um, from a DNS query in response to our DNS server. And we're going to actually look at that in um, Wireshark, which is a packet analysis tool. So that's the first time we've done that in one of these training videos, but it should be a really valuable look into actually at the protocol level how DNS works. Quick overview of DNS. So the fundamental uh, fundamental purpose of DNS is to map names that we can remember, like www.google.com, into IP addresses. Um, computers like IP addresses; they like numbers. Fundamentally, they like ones and zeros, bits and bytes. But um, but from our case, it would be really hard to remember a string of numbers like uh, 216.58. 194.164. Now, if you entered such a string into your web browser to go to a go to a website, um, that could actually work. You could go there, um, assuming the web server is configured to respond to its IP address. But that would be really super inconvenient, and nobody would ever use the internet. So, DNS again helps us map those names to numbers. Now, to muddy the waters a little bit, DNS can actually do some other things. It can match, uh, map IP addresses back to names too, and some other different types of queries. But fundamentally, names to IP addresses. A couple of properties of DNS before we get into our demo. Uh, DNS is hierarchical. This means that in DNS, basically, there's a, a zone that's uh, at what we kind of what we call the trunk of the tree structure and we call it the dot zone now the dot is typically hidden so you know you don't go to www.google.com dot you typically just hide that trailing dot but when we're setting up a dns server or something we refer to that as the dot zone okay um, and that dot zone holds uh, what we call the root information for um, all the other zones. So, for example, um, com dot and edu dot and gov dot. That holds that first level of information. So, in our tree here, there's the root, and then there's these um, top level domains we call. So, our first level of domain, and they're actually root level DNS servers that hold that information. And then there are servers, uh, for example, for the edu dot domain. In the edu dot domain, um, th those servers hold all the information for ucsd.edu, sdsu.edu, csusm.edu, stanford.edu. So you find out about those from this server. So you can see a tree hierarchy building, and I kind of tried to crudely illustrate a tree here. You can see kind of the base of the tree and all the branches. Same thing all the way up. So then the sdsu.edu.name servers hold information for things like www.sdsu.edu, sunspot.sdsu.edu, and other sdsu.edu servers. So basically, DNS has this wonderful hierarchy about it. Um, so basically, if you're looking for something way up here, you can start your query down here, find the edu servers, find the sdsu.edu servers, find www.sdsu.edu. The other thing about DNS is it's a distributed system. So kind of related to our, the hierarchical nature of DNS, uh, no one server holds all the information for every name on the internet. That would be near impossible. And that was actually one of the problems that DNS was trying to solve way back when. Can you believe it that DNS was actually kind of the, the base of work was laid for it in 1983. And in 1984, they kind of had the first working version of the DNS system. So it's very old. Um, but before that, universities would share big files of all the names. They called it the host's file. Um, 
that didn't scale very well. So one of the nice things about it is um, a, a specific name server has zones that they're in charge of. And we call that being authoritative for a zone. So for example, sdsu.edu name servers are authoritative for everything to the left of that. So, um, you know, www and sunspot and cos and everything like that. Similarly, edu servers are authoritative for everything to the left of that. So the UCSD and they can SDSU and CSUSM, they can issue those, um, those they respond to those queries. The nice thing, though, is going up in that hierarchy, everything above that is delegated. So the EDU servers can respond for sdsu.edu, but they don't need to know what the address for www.sdsu.edu is because the sdsu.edu web servers, or domain servers, excuse me, take care of that. So each name server only has to really worry about its own set of information, its zone, and it can let servers below in the hierarchy and above in the hierarchy respond for queries. Um, now the other thing about this is within each zone, so like say for sdsu.edu, you can actually have multiple servers that respond um, for that particular zone. So you can have many servers uh, handling busy zones like google.com or something like that. So it's a distributed system which allows it to operate at internet scale. Okay, that's it for slides. So let's look at the demo. I'm going to open up Wireshark here, which is uh, what we consider a protocol analyzer. It's going to allow us in to look inside the actual packets that are being sent by this computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'll actually minimize this so we can have them both together. So I'm going to open that up and I'm going to open a window and I'm going to use a command line DNS client. I'm going to issue a query for something we haven't looked up before. Let's do uh, nintendo.com there. Let's start our packet capture. Here we go filter for just DNS queries so we just apply to filter there and let's press enter here and stop okay so as we'd expect um, we just saw two packets here uh, two uh, DNS protocol packets and by uh, you can kind of barely see it but over here you see uh, arrow pointing to the right and an arrow pointing to the left and a little linkage between the two. That's because there's a DNS query, a standard query, and there's a DNS standard query response. Okay, so let's look at these packets in a little bit more detail. I'm going to kind of pull up this window part a little bit. This is the layer one and layer two portions of the packet, so I'm going to kind of discard that because that's not really the subject of this video. Let's start with layer three here. So the IP portion of the packet, we can see the source address of this laptop and the destination address. Now, what's this destination address? It's not the uh, DNS server of Nintendo.com or anything. Uh, we don't know that yet. What it is, is if you go to my uh, settings on my computer, you go into the network properties, go into advanced, go into DNS, 254.66 is the DNS server that's configured on my computer. And I only have one right now for demo purposes. Um, so basically what my computer's doing, as you can see in this packet, is asking its configured DNS server for the information uh, about Nintendo.com. Let's keep going down here in the um, packet. Let's close this. Layer 4 information, we can see that this is a UDP um, packet. The destination port is standard port 53, so UDP 53, which is the standard port for DNS. And on my end, my computer opens a random socket, in this case 61049, um, to do that specific stream. So that's our layer 4 information, UDP 53. DNS typically uses UDP for all of its queries. Now, here is the good part. Here's the, 
the actual uh, DNS portion of the packet. So in here, we have a, few th a whole bunch of good things. But first of all, we have a transaction ID. One thing we'll notice in both the query packet, the packet that we send out, and the response packet from our DNS server here, they have the same transaction ID. Okay, and, and that's basically so if you send a bunch of different queries to this DNS server, you can distinguish, oh, okay, this is this is this query that I sent out. And the transaction ID is just a randomized kind of two-byte field there. So now let's look at this. Uh, let's first look at the query packet a little bit. In the flags from this packet, we have really only one flag set here. Flags are just, rem remember the DNS uh, system is a protocol description, which just means a standard shared language. So my um, DNS client on my operating system can talk to the DNS server and they both know what to expect from each other. So they know that bits will be sent in a particular order. So the only bit that's set right here in this two byte field of the query flags is recursion desired. This basically means that we as a, a DNS client are asking our DNS server to do the work of um, finding out the complete answer to our question uh, recursively. So this means that we're asking the DNS server not just to stop at the root zone or anything like that, but actually to find out where .com is and, and ask those servers for Nintendo and then ask the Nintendo servers what the www address is. So we're basically saying, hey, DNS server, do all of the work of resolution for us, if you would, if you're able to. Also in this packet, we're specifying that we are asking one question, which is our DNS query. And then if we open this here, our one question is, hey, what is Nintendo.com? And the type of the record we're looking for is type A. Type A is the most common DNS record. That's basically saying, I have this name, please return to me an IP address. That's an A record. Um, for IPv6, we use quad A. So A, 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 A. Why is that? Well, um, a, a um, IPv4 address is four bytes long. A IPv6 address is 16 bytes long. So basically four times the length. We go from, so to translate into that, in, that into bits, we have a 32-bit address and a 128-bit address. So quad A versus single A, four times the length. So now let's look at our response. And hopefully you're starting to kind of see what's going on here. Um, our source port and destination port are flipped. So now, basically the source is from the server on port 53 and the destination is on 61049. Let me flip back and forth between those. So see, source and destination are flipping right there because it's a response. Transaction ID remains the same, which is great. We have left, oops, we have left the recursion desired flag set. We've also added recursion available. So this server confirmed that it is willing to do recursive queries for us. And the other flag that's set right here is that this is a response. So this is, this is a query response rather than a query. One question, three resource records are gonna be in our answer. So basically this part of the packet, and this is again all laid out in ones and zeros, this part of the packet saying that there's gonna be three responses, four authoritative resource records, which we're gonna um, basically think of as the authoritative DNS servers for the do that domain name, we'll expect four of those, and then four additional resource records which could probably be the same there. So there's the query again, going farther into the packet. That hasn't changed. What has been added on is the answers. So an answer for nintendo.com, some other data in there. Um, what happened here is that this query 
actually turn uh, return that Nintendo www.nintendo.com is what they call a C name, which really be basically means an alias to these two other servers. So we learn a lot from that query. We actually learned that Nintendo.com is hosted on um, Amazon Web Services behind ELBs, which are elastic load balancers, and specifically in the US West 2 region. Okay. So we actually have learned a lot about the Nintendo.com site here. So www.nintendo.com is actually an alias to these two elastic load balancers, which are kind of web load balancer servers. So that's how we get three different resource records. The CNAME response, and then the two A records here. So type CNAME, type A, A. And then we get the authoritative name servers. These four servers are authoritative for this domain and additional resource records. Uh, okay, and so these are different uh, servers there. Now what happened in, in my NSLOOKUP command is that it's hiding some data for me. So the, the actual response packet shows me a lot more data here. It shows me all these authoritative name servers and additional records. So what I'm going to try is a, a different uh, resolver here, a command called dig. Let's do the same thing. Okay, there we go. So there, after the a little bit of delay, is the response uh, to the uh, the DNS query for www.nintendo.com. And here we have the question section, one question, the answer section, and then here's the four authorities and the four additionals. Okay. Let's go in here to answers. Great. Very good. So basically, um, what we have here is an example of DNS in action. Now, when we open a web browser, for example, let's uh, let's let's start our DNS uh, capture again. Continue without saving. We open up our web browser. Let's take that out of here. Let's issue a query for, say, uh, about google.com. You'll notice a ton of DNS queries and responses happen almost immediately. So just to load the www.google.com site, you see there's all these queries, so different sites like um, fonts.googleapis.com, csi.gstatic.com, ogs.google.com, apis.google.com, plus.google.com, ssl.gstatic.com. So all these queries happen in the background just to load google.com. So DNS is always working for us in the background. All right, that's a uh, introduction to the DNS system. Super powerful. You can go way into depth. There are folks, obviously, who their full-time job is just to run um, name servers for company, DNS name servers. So it's a real big topic, but hopefully that was a helpful intro.